Most startups follow the same playbook. Pick a niche, raise venture capital, hire experts. But one company did the exact opposite. They entered the crowded productivity space with a bold claim. We'll replace all your work apps with one app. While others niche down, they went broad. While everyone spent on marketing, they spent zero dollars in the first three years. While competitors raised millions, they bootstrapped because investors didn't believe in them. The problem with not targeting any market is that everybody tells you you're stupid, right? Everybody tells you, you can't do that. You need to choose a market and go with it. And that's a huge reason why early on, nobody would fund us. We didn't have a choice to get money from anybody. And somehow, ClickUp went from zero to $20 million in annual recurring revenue in just two years. What did I see that everyone else missed? Let's dig in. The average person wastes 30% of their workday switching between different work apps. ClickUp's founder, Zeb Evans, was obsessed with solving this problem. But they never set out to build ClickUp. While building his previous startup, the team created an internal project management tool to manage their own work. During investor pitches, VCs ignored their actual product and kept asking about their project management tool. That's when they realized that they had accidentally found natural product market fit for a tool they weren't even trying to sell. This became ClickUp. The first thing on ClickUp's playbook is to dog food your own product. Eating your own dog food means using your own product internally to discover and fix issues before your customers do. This led to their natural product market fit. They built something people actually needed because they needed it themselves. A year later, they were rated among the top 10 fastest growing new apps alongside these big guys but they still haven't figured out how they were growing so fast. How could a small team with limited funding compete in a crowded market? Which brings us to the next strategy. Study what works. Unlike Behance or Pinterest, Mobin gives you access to real-world, production-ready mobile and web apps. You can just filter by app categories, screen patterns, UI elements, and complete user flows. Need to see how top apps handle onboarding? Done. Designing a checkout page? Here we go. You can even search for text within screenshots like this. And then just scroll down to see visually similar images or get inspiration from community collections. Mobin is the fastest way to research proven design solutions that actually work in the real world. Try Mobin's free plan using this link. Okay, so back to the question. What's the secret to ClickUp's rapid growth? The answer lies in a strategy called product-led growth. Most companies rely on sales and marketing teams to acquire customers. ClickUp took a different approach. ClickUp provided a genuinely useful free tier, so users experience value before paying. Every time someone used ClickUp for collaboration, it naturally invited new users into the ecosystem, multiplying their user base without spending a penny on ads. Rather than paying for ads, they built an organic SEO strategy targeting people searching for competitors like Trello and Asana. Now, these tactics drove the insane growth for ClickUp, but the real breakthrough came from a deeper insight on user experience. Zap noticed that most productivity tools were too opinionated. They forced you to work how their founders think you should work. The whole vision for ClickUp was being able to work for everybody. No matter what type of team you are, what company you are, what size you are, what you do, it's for the builders, the marketers, it's for the engineers, for people even building rockets. You can start simple and build complex. Teams could turn features on and off based on specific needs. Users can customize views for different workflows. Everything could be personalized. And then the pandemic hit. COVID-19 forced the world to work remotely almost overnight. Suddenly, teams had to collaborate digitally. But constant app switching killed productivity, while finance departments questioned increased software cost. Remember how investors dismissed ClickUp for trying to do too much? Well, the jack-of-all trades have now become the master. For ClickUp, this crisis was validation. The market was finally ready for their vision. 
after three years of bootstrapping, they raised their first external funding. $35 million. Six months later, another $100 million, valuing the company at $1 billion. They achieved unicorn status in just three years. A milestone that took Asana a decade and Monday.com seven years to achieve. But money alone doesn't create success. What set ClickUp apart was their execution speed. ClickUp shipped new features every single Friday without fail. And in 2022 alone, they've shipped more than 100 new features. When ChatGPT launched in November 2022, ClickUp released their AI assistant just three months later. They were very fast to respond to market trends. The last strategy in this playbook is the simplest but also the most important one. Zeb didn't just collect feedback. He built his entire morning routine around it. I get up and the first thing I do is I read feedback from you guys, good and bad. The team then prioritized features based on community votes. When you prioritize user feedback over investors' opinions, you're building something that people actually want. It can be a little bit overwhelming for users to find their way around ClickUp. While the UI is functional, it lacks the kind of polish that you would see in tools like Linear, Thingstree, Notion, and Mobin. I would love to see them invest in thoughtful UX refinements. And that's how ClickUp built a billion dollar company in just three years. But here's the big question. What if the best practices in your industry are actually holding you back? What assumptions in your field deserve a second look? Maybe the path to building a better product isn't more funding or more marketing. It's simply listening to users and implementing their feedback. If you like this video, comment below so that I'll make more videos like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.